Good morning. Welcome back to part two of our study on the first trumpet. Just to summarize our experience yesterday, we discovered that the message of the first angel was quite simply this, that God was going to customize trials which he was going to use for the purpose of refining us, of preparing us for his coming. I want you to notice that the fire and hailstones was mingled with blood. One of the most important things that we need to always remember and never forget is that sins can only be forgiven because of the shedding of blood. And it's important for us to understand that in this time period of trial, as the trial reveals to us our sins, we need to go on our knees and confess them. And as the word says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And then as it says, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we see that God has got a purpose in mind. He wants to wrestle with mankind. Now today we're going to come to what this message and the impact that it actually has on planet earth. I want you to notice that this message is flung down, is brought down on planet earth. What I'm intrigued by, and I'm going to read first of all out of Revelation chapter 8, and I'm going to read the, the second part of verse 7. It says, A third of the earth was burnt up, a third of the trees were burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. So it's interesting, dear friends, that this message has an impact on planet Earth in different ways. Now what catches my attention initially is the concept of third. That there are a third, a third of the Earth is destroyed, a third of the trees are destroyed, and then it says all the green grass. So I want you to notice, let's first try and find out what is God trying to teach us when he talks about the third. Now in order to understand this better, I have to take you to Zechariah. Now in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 8 and 9, I read this. In the whole land, declares the Lord, two thirds will be struck down and perish, yet one third will be left in it. This third I will bring into the fire. I will refine them like silver and test them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people and they will say, the Lord is our God. Now here we get the distinct clarity or message that a third of the people are going to respond positively to God and acknowledge God as their God and that God will acknowledge them as his people. But here in the story of the trumpets, we find out that a third is actually destroyed. So it's, a, it's the opposite side of it. It means that out of the whole, a third of people are going to be, um, or turn away from God, are going to reject Him. Now I want you to notice that the first point that we are drawn to is that a third of the earth is destroyed by the impact of this message. And what does it mean when we talk about the earth? And in order to understand that better, I want to take you to um, Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. Now in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, we read about a woman who rides on a, a beast. And then it says, but I want, let me read it. Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits on many waters. So we see that she... This woman is described later on as sitting on a beast, a scarlet beast. But initially she's introduced as sitting on many waters. Now what does waters actually symbolize in God's word? In Revelation chapter 17 verse 15, I'm actually given the answer. The angel said to me, the waters you saw where the prostitute sits are people, multitudes, nations, and languages. So we find out that when we're talking about seas or waters, great amounts of waters, we're talking about densely populated areas such as cities. So when we talk about earth, in Revelation chapter 12 verse 16, we find out that the earth actually opens up. It says there in verse 15, 
Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water again, lots of people, like a river to overtake the woman, that is to overwhelm her. That is, in actual fact, you know, we always feel that the majority influence the, the behavior of people. But it says there in verse 16, But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. So earth, as we look at these two verses, symbolizes areas that are not so densely populated. For example, rural areas. So let's try and understand this. The message that we are getting that God is going to bring down customized trials doesn't mean it's only going to happen in cities where there are lots of people. But that this impact, this message will also take place on those people who find themselves in rural areas. Sometimes people flee away from the cities and they go to rural areas as if that will be a better place for them to be. It's as if that will maybe make them better people. But according to the word of God, I'm finding out that those people who flee to rural areas will also be or turn away from God as a result of this message. I want you to notice the next part is that a third of the trees are destroyed. Now, I want to take you to Jeremiah in order to understand this uh, beautifully. And in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verses 7 and 8, I read this. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots from this, by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Again, I want you to remind, to remind you that these trees are actually destroyed by this message. It's almost as if these people who once were people who followed God somehow turn away from him. They fall away. I also want you to notice that in Daniel chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And in this dream he sees this great tree, this tree that fills the earth and animals come and find their shelter in it, the, the birds in its branches, and a lot of people benefit from its, from its existence. But this tree is cut down. Now, what does this tree symbolize here? In Daniel chapter 4, we don't have to guess again, but in verse 22, Daniel gives us the interpretation of the tree. He says, you, O king, are the tree. So I want you to understand again that when we talk about trees, we're talking about people who hold leadership positions. We're talking about people who have an, a big influence on people. The sad part about this story, though, is that a third of these, these people who once walked with God, who once led God's people, will fall away as a result of the message, as a result of the trials. This is concerning, dear friends. Then I want you to notice something that is quite intriguing. It says, all the green grass will be burnt up. Now, this was really an incredible challenge to me at one stage. I couldn't understand what God was trying to bring out there. So I want to turn to Isaiah and I'm going to read, sorry, I'm going to read out of Psalm 103. Um, it's also, this, this concept is also brought out in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 6 to 8. But in Psalm 103, um, David writes these words. Verse 15. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. Now, one of the things I find that that is kind of the thinking of all mankind is that they've come to believe the lie of the devil. He said to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden that you will not surely die. But here we get this clear understanding that all the green grass will perish and what is this actually trying to teach us? Now, I want you to notice that if I go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, I read this very beautiful understanding. It says, Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God to be honored and glory forever and ever. So God's word teaches me that the only person who is immortal 
and who is eternal is God, the God of creation. In actual fact, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul writes these words, and I want you to notice what he says. I charge you to keep the commandments. This is found in verse 14 through to verse 15. Without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's saying to us, we need to listen to God until Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven. It says there further, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, who no one has seen or can see him, can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. So what we are learning from this whole thing is that people who claim that there is no God will only find out that there is a God who is immortal, eternal, and that we are not immortal, but that we are grass, which today is and tomorrow is cast away. And these trials that are going to come on the world in general is going to prove this point to mankind that you are not immortal. I want you to close with the study by turning to 2 Timothy chapter 1. And Paul says something there that is so important. And I want to read it to you from verse 8. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life. So we find out again that the blood of Christ saves us and that the purpose of the trials is to call us to a holy life. Not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. That means that God has got a purpose for us and that is to have the life and character that he has. To reveal his image to mankind. It then says further, and I want to read this to you. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. So one thing I want you to understand, dear friends, that the gift of immortal life is God's gift to us. And this is what this is the purpose that he has in store for mankind. The question here is, where do you fall in this category of people? Do you find yourself in a rural area hoping that this rural area will somehow prevent you from falling away? The bad news is that those who find themselves in that kind of situation, part of them, a third of them, will fall away. Do you find yourself in a leadership role in the church where you have an influence or a leadership role in society where you have an influence? It doesn't mean that by finding yourself in that position that you can be protected by that because I'm counsel again that a third of the trees will fall away. Then last of all, dear friends, I want you to understand that immortal immortality is God's gift to us, which, which he had in mind from the beginning. When God created man, he created him with immortality in his soul. But as a result of sin, we die. But God has this purpose in mind, and that is to give us the gift of eternal life. Dear friends, this message has an impact on you. Where do you find yourself here? Are you going to be pickled or preserved? God bless you.